welcome to this week's video. Um, so this week's video, I'm going to go through how I made my recent doll. So her name is Buxbo the uh, Moss Raccoon. And I, I used the same um, fur as Bandit, the raccoon that I made previously. Um, but I have dyed it a uh, greeny colour. So that video will be on my Patreon um, if you want to see how I dyed it. Um, so she has a um, ball and socket armature inside with wire legs. So you can pose it any which way. Um, so there you have it. And also if you want to know how I added all the markings to her, I have a video on my Patreon as well um, that you can access when you pledge five dollars. Um, and yeah, go through the process of how I add the markings and also um, a whiskers tutorial on there as well. So there's quite a few things on there at the moment uh, and more coming. Um, so yeah, she will be available in my shop. My patrons get early access to her. Um, so if she's not already been snapped up, she will be in my shop at creaturesofnat.com. Um, but yeah, if you want to see how I made her, then just keep watching. Alrighty, so same deal, starting off with my resin cast. And this is a little bit of an older cast. Um, I'd say maybe two years old or so. Um, and with the, as you can see, the front of the nose is a little bit um, orange, a little bit more yellow than the rest of it. It's because uh, it's halfway in between different um, batches of resin. Um, but once it's been poured and cured, I demold it and lose the footage of me painting it. <laughs> but um, yeah, paint it with acrylic paints. And for this instant, I'm going to be using um, painted eyes, and I'm going to use some. Um, clear nail polish to actually paint in some gloss on the eyes. I found this to be um, kind of the best way to achieve a gloss um, but always test your resin first just to make sure it doesn't have a bad reaction to it. Um, I use resin from Barnes, um, Easy Cast it's called and I've never had a reaction to it but um, yeah just test it out first. If um, uh, what's it called? If you find that you do have a reaction to it, um, I'd suggest using some different sort of um, gloss varnishes. So you can get water-based ones and you can get Liquitex ones and you can get uh, solvent-based ones, but definitely solvent ones, you just need to use it, uh, uh, test it first. So what I'm doing is I'm applying a thin coat of the nail polish onto my painted surface and uh, I use chromacryl acrylic paints so I know it doesn't react badly to my nail polish uh, and I usually let that dry and then you can apply as many coats as you as you want to get a nice finish on your eyeballs um, but yeah I found this one to be the best way but like I said before uh, I'll show you a couple of other products that you can use um, So another one that works well is this Elmer's glue. It's washable clear glue and you can get that from just your local office supply store. Uh, another good one that you can use is Liquitex Gloss Medium and Varnish. This is a water-based one, so you can cut it with water. There's also a solvent-based one, um, but I found this one to be probably the better one uh, and it lasts a long time. Moving on to the hands, and I do have footage of painting the hands, so you get the idea. Um, but yeah, using the same chrome acryl acrylic paint, I'm going to go ahead and paint the inside of the hands black because uh, that's what raccoons have, little black, um, what do you call it, palms. And um, I usually prime my resin before I apply any paint to it just so it adheres properly and leave that to dry overnight. Moving on to the fur, and like I said at the start of the video, this is the same fur that I use on Bandit, the other raccoon that I made. Um, so it's a perfect faux fur for uh, a raccoon. It's very, very similar to a raccoon's fur. So what I'm doing now is I'm just working out the way the pile of the fur goes, and then I'll go ahead and draw my patterns onto it. Uh, I will be making a pattern video on my Patreon, but um, it's not a strong folk subject of mine so I don't want to like make things patterns in my shop or anything because I just don't think they're good enough um, but I will make like a tips video for my patreon in the 
not so distant future um but anyway let's have a look at the fur so you can see how the fur has this little patterning in behind it um and it gives it like this good raccoon look to it um and what i'm doing now is i'm going to go and cut out all of the parts or like the pieces um, using a small pair of sharp scissors that I like to use small scissors because I can get in between the pile easier and I can just cut the backing and I won't be left with like blunt fur um, so once I've done this um, I usually just get rid of all of excess fur and then what I actually did was dyed this fur um, but this video will be over on my patreon if you want to know how I did it like I said before but you can see the differences of the color between the original color and I sort of just wanted a subtle green I didn't want it to be full-on green so um, yeah this is kind of what I was looking for to begin with um, just a little bit of subtlety green so once that's done I can go ahead and sew everything up so I'm just pinning all of the pieces first side together and then I usually use a sewing machine which I prefer to use a sewing machine because it's a lot faster and a lot stronger um, but you will have to do some hand sewing anyway just to um, finish up all of your loose ends um, and I've just got like a brother machine it's quite old and I've never really had a problem with it um, just have to be careful when you're sewing thick faux fur just to be weary of the needle so, so just don't zoom through it <laughs> because you'll end up snapping the needle like I have multiple times but the needles are pretty inexpensive to buy and you can get them pretty much anywhere that sells sewing machines and craft supplies so this is what we have once I've sewn all the bits up um, so you can see the backing of the fur actually got a lot more colored than the pile. Pile tend to be a little bit harder to dye um, just because it's a different type of fabric or material so the dye doesn't really adhere to it as well as just plain fabric. So uh, what I'm doing now is turning the body inside out or the right way around. Uh, so I've left the back end open and all of the feet area and obviously the neck so the head can be attached um, and I just pull it through and I use a wooden tool to just help push the any loose ends through um, the other side and just be careful not to use stainless steel or harsh tools because you can actually poke a hole in your fabric and you don't want that so I have a really blunt wooden tool that works really well. So Boxpo's little backstory is Moss raccoons are masters of camouflage. They blend into the forest floor so well you can only see them when they move. Some raccoons will even prompt moss to grow on their fur and will meticulously groom and maintain the moss that grows on them. Moss raccoon diets mainly consist of various mushrooms and fungi, only consuming a small amount of moss. They usually reside in a densely forested area where moss is prevalent, usually around tall trees region of Nanklandara and the green tribal lands of Wandia region in Krai, India. So once I have the armature in, um, I'll go ahead and glue the neck area to the head just so I have like a base and I can sort of start working around um, a base sort of anchor point um, and that way nothing moves around too much and nothing sort of swirls or s swirls around um, and then I can add my polyfill to the inside as well once the glue has dried um, and then everything starts taking shape once that's done right so I can start sewing up all of the loose ends and I usually start off with the front two legs um, and that way I can after I've sewn it up I can sort of start filling out with the polyfill like I said um, but I like to have it sewn up just so I don't go overboard with the polyfill and I can sort of um, put it in places that I think need it um, usually with the arm areas you don't need too much um, or any at all because you have that backing of the fabric um, sort of curled over on itself when you sew it up uh, and I use a ladder stitch to sew um, all of my ends up I have a video on my channel if you want to know how to do it um, and I always use a good quality thread because it helps a lot especially when you're sewing um, faux fur so once it's sewn up, the same deal as the neck, um, I go ahead and add all that fabric glue and I load it up um, just to make sure that there's enough but there's a good fine point between too much and not enough um, but you'll get the hang of it once you've done it a couple of times how much um, fabric glue to apply uh, and you can always add more um, if you think it's not enough. 
So working at the tail area, I'm just slipping it over the armature just to see if I need to make it shorter or anything. And sure enough, I need to take a couple of things off and I've got these special tools um, to help pop off the ball and socket armature. I can make a whole video about it if you're interested. Just let me know in the comments um, and what you'd like to know and I can make it. Uh, so this seems to be the right length and I just realized this looks kind of rude. <laughs> Whoops. Um, so once it's all sewn up anyway, uh, I use that lattice stitch like I said before to sew it all up. I just go ahead and just pull out little bits of the pile that have been stuck in um, the seam. Um, and I just got like a little pointy steel tool. And the trick is just to actually pull it out little by little and not in a whole batch because you end up sort of damaging your stitching. Um, so good tip, just take your time on pulling any little bits of pile out. Um, but it really does make a difference when you pull it out because it's makes your doll look more finished and bolder. And the same deal again with the back legs, just uh, gluing them up. Uh, I usually glue it up before I sew it, but for some reason I forgot, <laughs> but it's not a big deal. Then I go ahead and apply the fur to the face and I'm keeping the same um, original raccoon type markings for this doll as well. I just wanted it to be green. <laughs> so this is what it looks like once I've applied all the fur and then I can give it a good trim um, however much I want and add any markings that I want. Um, like I said at the start of the video, you can find that markings video on my Patreon if you want to know how I've done it. Uh, and then cleaning up all the eye area as well. Um, and adding any more paint jobs and sort of refining some bits and pieces um, that have been sort of lost in making the doll um, or furring, the furring process. But um, yes, now adding in the markings um, and I, there's, there's no wrong or right way to do it. It's whatever you find comfortable, but I like my method um, obviously because I've come up with it. Um, but anyway, this is what this little one looks like. Um, I don't know if I've even said her name. It's Buxbo, Buxbo the Moss Raccoon. Um, but anyway, check her out in my shop if you haven't already um, had a look. You can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat. And I want to thank my patrons again for supporting me. Uh, I really do appreciate it. It helps me stay motivated. Anyway, I'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.